I've covered creating your own WordPress login pages on several occasions. And one of those questions that pops up regularly in the comment section is, how do I stop a failed login defaulting to the standard WordPress login page? Today, I'm going to show you how you can deal with this using Elemental Pro's custom login widget. But firstly, a quick thank you to Els over on the WP Tuts Facebook group, a link to which is in the description below, and to the article over on WordPress Flow. Again, the link to this will be in the description. Now, this article highlights this as being a shortcoming of using Elemental and Elemental Pro and how it should have the options to cater for a very common eventuality to make the login widget a fully featured solution and not one that misses some key functionality out. With that being said, let's take a look at firing up Elemental and building a fully featured custom login page on your site. Now at this point in time, there's no built-in widget or settings to handle user registration, etc. This is purely for dealing with custom login pages, ones that are perfect for keeping your users away from the default and frankly pretty ugly WordPress version. So let's just fire up Elemental and take a look at how we can start building this out. Let's kick this off by taking a look at the result we're working towards. I'm going to hop over to my custom login page. We're going to have this animated login section, which looks very similar in its content to what you'd see as part of WordPress, but we've created our custom login page, which will redirect to any page that we specify upon correct login details. However, if you put incorrect details in or you don't put any details at all in, we hit login, we're going to get this error message that tells us there's a problem with our login details. So that's what we're working towards. Now, before we move on and take a look at recreating this, there's something that I want to show you, which is part of probably the key component to how this is all going to work. If we take a look at the URL upon a failed login, you can see we get this question mark login equals failed. Now, why is this important? Because this is what's used to trigger the error message underneath. And this is using the string underscore get method of passing URL parameters through your browser. Now, if you've never seen string underscore get or string underscore post parameters, take a look at the article that we're using for this tutorial, and you'll see there's a link in there that says how to use the get and post variables. It's kind of useful if you've never seen those before, and it allows you to pass information back and forth through various different parts of forms and so on, and use those as triggers. So they can be very, very useful, and Elementor supports a lot of the things you can do with these URL parameters. Okay, so that will be said, we now need to take a look at the key components we need to build this out. So we come back over to the article, you can see there are two different sections of code. You've got this first section, which deals with the redirection and check in to make sure that the details are correct and there's no empty fields and so on. We'll take a look at that in a little moment. Second of all, then, is the option for setting out and using that URL parameter to pull up and display the error message. Now, there's a lot of ways you could do this. You could insert this code directly into your function's PHP file. Now, we've covered that in lots of different tutorials, and that's one way of doing things, making sure that you always use a child theme to do that. You don't do that with your function's PHP file. That's your main theme. However, we're going to do this using a plugin, which is completely free, and that's called code snippets. And if you want to see more about this plugin and my thoughts on it, I'll put a link in the description below to a video I released yesterday that goes over how to use it, what it's for, and so on. We're just going to use this as a simple and easy way to inject the code that we need into our site. But before we do that, let's build the page that's going to have our login form, and then we can set up those conditions. So we're just going to come over and add a new page in, and we're just going to call this my login. So there we go, my login. We'll publish this page and then we'll open up Elementor and start creating the actual page itself. Now, I'm not going to go into tons of detail and we're just going to create a very simple form to insert in here. So this is using Elementor Pro. You need that to have access to this login form. And there's our login form. Okay, so we'll just disable those labels. We'll set this to be media and blah, 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 blah. Come into the button, we can change that as well if we want to, and you can adjust your alignment. So obviously you'd spend a bit of time configuring this to make it look nice and neat and tidy, like I showed you in the demonstration. Let's just jump over to the additional options, and this is where you would configure your form. Now, this is entirely up to you how you want this to work. A couple of things that you want to do, though. First of all, redirect after login. Now, what do you want to do? Do you want to redirect it to a certain page? Let's say... As an example, you've created a front-end dashboard for your users, for your clients, that you don't want them to have access to the normal WordPress dashboard. 
Well, you could use this to redirect to that new location. And if you want to see how to create something like a user front end dashboard, I've got a link in the description to the tutorial that I released a couple of months back, which covers that in its entirety. So you can get really creative. So all you need to do is you just say redirect after login, drop the URL you want inside there. You've also got the option to redirect after logout up to you. If you want to set that, you've then got options like lost password, remember me logged in message and so on. I'm going to leave all these as they are, because I just want to demonstrate the actual form itself and how we set the condition as opposed to configuring this for an entire site. So we've created the form now. We've got our login form. So let's just hit update on there. Hopping over to the test site, let's take a look at this now without any of those conditions set up. So we'll open up my login. We'll just set nothing at all inside there. We'll hit login and boom, it takes us straight over to the normal WordPress login section with the error messages. Not what we want at all. So let's deal with that next. So we're going to do come out of this and exit to our dashboard. We're going to go in then and take a look at our code snippets plugin. So we're going to all snippets. And from there, we're going to create our first code snippets. So we're going to say add new. And this is going to be the redirect on fail. So we're going to say redirect on failed login. So we know exactly what it is. You can then choose whether you want to run this snippet everywhere, only in the administration, only on the front end, or only run once. I'm going to leave this run the snippet everywhere, but you could choose other options, things like only run on the front end of the site, because obviously it's a login page that's going to be on the front end. Up to you. Let's come over to the WordPress flow site now, and we're going to come down to this block of code, and we're going to simply grab that block of code. We're going to copy that, come back to our snippets, and we're just going to paste that inside there. Now, let me just break this down to you. I'm not going to give you a full fledged sort of covering of the code because in all honesty, I'm not a great coder in the slightest. But what it's going to do is it's got two different stages. You've got the first stage, which is to redirect the user back to the login page after the login failed and add a string underscore get parameter to let us know, which is that failed parameter that I showed you just now. So what this is saying is that if the user puts in incorrect details, redirect them back and then use that append that URL with that that string underscore get parameter. The second section then is for anybody that tries to log in without inserting either a username, email or password to do the same thing. So it's just giving you two conditions. If they're wrong, do one thing. If they're empty, do the same thing. Take you back to that page with the error message. So that's the first thing. You can drop in some descriptions and tags if you want to. But we're going to say save changes and activate. So that's the first part. So let's take a look at that now and see what's happening. So back on my login page, we're going to hit login. And you should see now we're taken back to the page, but we've also got the login failed appended to our URL. So that's the first part done. We just now need to deal with that login failed so we can then put this error message up onto our screen. To do that, we're going to come back over to the WordPress flow site, and we're going to grab this second little block of code. We're going to copy that again, come back into our code snippets, and we're going to say we want to add a new snippet. And this is just failed login error message. Drop that code inside there. And again, you can see this is all pretty simple. There's some inline code for the actual echo out of the error message with some inline styling. And as it says in the article, not necessarily the best way of doing it, but this is a really simple way of doing it. You could easily apply styling through any of the other methods you wanted to directly inside your theme, however you want to do it. What is important right now, though, is this, which is the add shortcode login underscore fail underscore messaging. So what this little block of code is doing is it's creating and registering the short code login underscore fail messaging. We need that. So we're going to copy that from there and then that's all we need to do. So we're going to save this like we did before and activate it. So that's now the code set up. So the next thing we have to do is come back into our login page. So we're going to come back into my login, open up with Elementor. And we're now going to just drop in the short code widget and reference that short code we've just registered and put that onto our page. So let's just search for short code, drag and drop that onto our page where we want to place it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open a square bracket, we're going to drop in that short code name, close the square, square bracket, hit apply. So now what's going to happen is if it sees that URL parameter of failed, it will display this message, this short code message. If it doesn't see it, it won't display anything at all. So when you go to log in for the first time, Nothing is in the URL parameter, so therefore you won't see the error message. So let's update this. 
So now, providing everything is okay, let's come back to our page. We're just gonna go back and go back to my login and we're gonna do the same again. We're not gonna put any details in, we're gonna hit login. And there we go, there's your failed message because we have login equals failed at the top. However, if we try to do something like just put some random details in and say login, because those details are incorrect, we're gonna get the same failed message at the top and the URL parameter is gonna be passed over. Obviously, if we put in the correct details, we get redirected to wherever we wanted to go to. So this is a great way of being able to create more user-focused login pages with WordPress. Hopefully what you've seen is it's not as complex as you may have first thought. However, I would still love to see more options included in Elementor Pro for dealing with things like lost password, registrations, those kinds of really super useful things. But as always, I welcome your feedback, so please drop any comments, questions, or anything else you want to say in that comment section below. All applicable links for everything I've covered are in the description, and if you want to learn more, check out the videos you can see on screen right now. My name's been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.